Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 insanely racist moments in classic movies that you forgot about. That is the that is the watch you to shaman. The what he what? For this list, we'll be looking at the worst and most insensitive racial elements found in widely beloved films. You won't find any Disney or animated picks, as those deserve their own lists. What do you make of these sequences? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Deck the Halls, A Christmas Story Widely regarded as a Christmas classic, this film is both endearing and hilarious, beautifully capturing the nostalgia many share for childhood Christmases. There it is. The holy grail of Christmas gifts, the Red Ryder 200-shot range model air rifle. Near the end of the movie, however, the Parker family visit a small Chinese restaurant and are entertained by the employees. The men are heavily accented, and their attempt at singing Deck the Halls is criticized by another employee. Tis the season to be joy. It's quite a problematic sequence. Not only is it propagating a stereotypical Asian accent, but it's also encouraging the idea that this accent is something to laugh at. It's a bizarre and disconcerting moment that ruins the story's otherwise warm tone. This sequence was updated and subverted in the 2017 Fox special, A Christmas Story Live. I, I wasn't expecting that. No. What were you expecting? Number nine, making fun of indigenous people. Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. The cinematic landscape was arguably dominated by one thing in the 90s, and that was Jim Carrey playing wacky and now iconic characters. Do not fret, my little woodland friend, for your life is in the hands of Ace Ventura. In this sequel to the classic original, Ace Ventura makes his way to Africa and interacts with various indigenous people. The entire storyline has an undertone of racism to it, embodying the white savior complex as Ace helps solve a dispute between the Wachati and Wachutu peoples. The chief says he knew you would come. Libby, libby, wah! Chim chimney, chim chim chiroo! Hi! Ace also continuously pokes fun at them, and the movie thereby uses their culture, language, and rituals as a crude outlet for comedy. In doing so, it portrays them as other in an incredibly racist way. I like them already. Bamba way a tuna. Bamba way a tuna. Number 8. Asian Bond. You Only Live Twice. One of Sean Connery's last appearances as James Bond, you Only Live Twice sees the special agent heading to Japan to prevent a nuclear war between America and the Soviet Union. That's what you've got to find out, and fast, before the real shooting starts. This damn thing could blow up into a full-scale war. While there, Bond is given a makeover to look Japanese, and it is unfortunate, to say the least. Not only is the very idea of an Asian makeover ridiculously misguided, it's not even convincing. The girl I have chosen is an agent of mine, but first, you must become Japanese. Bond is simply given a horrendously ugly wig and bushy eyebrows, and the whole thing is both offensive and embarrassing. Suffice to say, James Bond donning yellow face is not one of the franchise's iconic moments. Far from it, in fact. Taiga said, from now on, you must do everything in Japanese style. Everything? Good for Taiga. Number seven, Punjab and the Asp, Annie. The first movie adaptation of the beloved Broadway musical Annie has a big racial diversity problem. Buddha says, a child without courage is like a night without stars. Come! <laughs> there are essentially only two major characters of color, and they are both portrayed in seriously offensive ways. Named Punjab and the Asp, they work as bodyguards for the wealthy and white Daddy Warbucks. That alone is problematic given the undertones and power dynamics at play, but there's more. Punjab, buy out the 8 o'clock show. Let's all go to the movie. Punjab is an Indian man who's played by a Trinidadian American actor, a casting decision that many have since called out and criticized. Plus, both he and his co-worker are given names that are suspect and lazy, to put it mildly. Oh, and the seemingly Japanese asp gives Annie karate lessons, because of course he does. Oh, Mr. Warbucks, wanna see what the asp taught me today? Hi! Ah! Oh! Oh! To the couch, Punjab, if you please. Number six, Long Duck Dong, 16 Candles. 
This classic teen film from John Hughes is certainly a product of its time, and not in a good way. Can I borrow your underpants for 10 minutes? Much ink has been spilled regarding both its casual promoting of sexual violence and the horribly offensive character of Long Duck Dong. Japanese-American actor Getty Watanabe put on a stereotypical Asian accent for the role, and he was later approached by some viewers who found his performance offensive. Very clever dinner. Appetizing food fit neatly into interesting uh, round pie. Numerous Asian American groups also denounced the film, calling Long Duck Dong stereotypical and racist. Molly Ringwald, the 80s icon and star of Sixteen Candles, has also called him a grotesque stereotype. It's easy to see why, considering his inappropriate accent and behavior, and the unwarranted gong sound that follows him. What's happening, hot stuff? Number 5. The Indigenous Characters – The Searchers Though it's regarded by many as the best western around, the Searchers presents a disturbingly offensive portrait of indigenous people. The story takes place amid the historical Texas Native American wars of the 19th century. The indigenous characters are portrayed as evil villains and systematically shot down in action sequences. They're also mistreated, and even the supposed hero, Ethan Edwards, attempts to kill his own niece to avoid seeing her among the Comanche. Genocide, Martin. Don't eat. Ethan, no, you don't! Some argue that this offensive depiction serves the racial themes of the movie and the general subversion of the white western hero. Regardless, that doesn't make it any easier to digest. It also doesn't excuse the chieftain Scar being played by a white German American in red face. Two sons killed by white men. For each son, I take many scalps. Number four. The whole movie, Gone with the Wind. When it comes to cinematic classics, few compete with Gone with the Wind. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The epic to end all epics, Victor Fleming's seminal work has made more money than any other film when you account for inflation. However, it's impossible to ignore its warped depiction of American history, something that has resulted in much controversy. Black viewers in particular were vocal, immediately calling out the negative and one-note portrayal of black characters. Miss Scott, where you going without your shawl and not air flicks to set in? And how come you didn't ask them gentlemen to stay for supper? The way that the movie praises and dignifies both slavery and the Confederacy is also quite problematic. Nothing has really changed. Gone with the Wind continues to stir debate for its misaimed application of pseudo-history, and it was temporarily pulled from HBO Max in 2020. They've got factories, shipyards, coal mines, and a fleet to bottle up our harbors and starve us to death. All we've got is cotton and slaves and arrogance. Number 3. Asian Mysticism – Big Trouble in Little China John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China is a martial arts cult classic starring Kurt Russell as truck driver Jack Burton. Where's Jack? It's all Kurt. Everybody relax, I'm here. Jack and his buddy Wang Chi venture into a magical underworld hidden in San Francisco's Chinatown. It's here where all the trouble begins, not just from a plot perspective, but a racial one. Of course the Chinese mix everything up. <laughs> Look at what they have to work with, huh? There's Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoist alchemy and sorcery. The idea of a white man entering a spiritual land, fighting a bunch of Chinese individuals, and defiling their iconography is dodgy at best, horribly racist at worst. The movie also plays into the thorny trope of magical Asian characters partaking in mystic otherworldliness and using it for nefarious purposes. Big trouble in Little China is big trouble indeed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm a reasonable guy, but I've just experienced some very unreasonable things. Number 2. Indian Culture – Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom This is widely regarded as the darkest entry in the Indiana Jones franchise. It's incredibly violent, and also rather unsympathetic, with its depiction of so-called Indian culture proving especially difficult to digest. The North Indian society depicted in the film is rather destitute and in desperate need of a savior. On top of that, the people and their customs aren't given any kind of depth or authenticity. 
Even worse is the thuggy cult, who partake in sacrificial activities, mistreat kids, and so much more. Balima. Balima. Sure, you could argue that this isn't necessarily meant to represent Indian culture as a whole, just this specific evil cult, but it still plays into racist orientalism and depicts another culture as strange and immoral. If I offended you, then I am sorry. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mr. Yunioshi, Breakfast at Tiffany's The 60s were a very different time, one in which yellow face was seemingly applied without a shred of remorse or shame. Oh darling, I am sorry, but I lost my key. But that was two weeks ago! You cannot go on or keep ringing my bell! You disturb me! You must have a key made! It was wrong then, and it's wrong now. Perhaps cinema's worst and most blatant instance of this comes via Breakfast at Tiffany's, with white Brooklynite Mickey Rooney playing the Japanese Mr. Yunioshi. You promise not to be angry, I might let you take those pictures we mentioned. Where? Sometimes. The character is a gross caricature, with Rooney speaking in an offensive Asian accent and wearing a mouthpiece to give himself buck teeth. Various people involved in the movie, including producer Richard Shepard and director Blake Edwards, have expressed remorse for the yellow face and voiced their desire to recast the role. Let's go, lady! This time I'm warning you! I am definitely this time going to call in the police! 